Hello and welcome back to the video. Today we're going to continue talking about EMC and best design practices for PCB design. In this specific video I'm going to talk about EMI filter selection and search protection for power supplies. Doing those things will help us to pass the conducted emissions test as well as search protection and transient voltage tests. With the conducted emissions, there are two types of noise that we need to care about. The first one is the common mode noise, and the common mode noise is a type of noise that would be present on both conductors. So it would be equally present on positive and neutral conductor. Whereas the other type of noise is the differential mode noise, and the differential mode noise is only present on one conductor, but not on the other. So now that we know that, Let's take a look at the EMI filter and find out what parts are responsible for what. So on this picture here, the X capacitors are filtering out differential mode noise because they are filtering from one line to another line. So if there is a noise on L and there is no noise on N, the capacitor will filter it out. Whereas for a common mode noise, this isn't gonna be quite as effective and what we need is Y capacitors and an inductor in series. Altogether, this circuit is called EMI filter. Typically, I recommend to use where possible a part like this, where an EMI filter is integrated into the mains connector. And because it's already integrated, it has a very specific advantage of uh, parts being very close to each other. So it is typically much better performance than uh, an EMI filter that you would design yourself. Having said that, those parts can be rather expensive and sometimes it is cheaper to design your own EMI filter rather than using an off-the-shelf part. So let's take a look at that possibility. This is an example of a real-world product application. So as you can see here, we have Y capacitors as close as possible to the connector. And we have X capacitor filtering out differential noise. And we have our inductor and another X capacitor after the inductor. So those are the main parts that you will need for a typical EMI filter design. Obviously, EMI filters can get quite bulky because you will be pushing quite a lot of amps through your power supply. But this is something that we just need to consider. And if you have a 4 amp power supply, you must have a 4 amp EMI filter and so on. So when you're designing your own EMI filter, you must take into consideration the current rating of your power supply. The same applies obviously when you specify a common mode filter on a DC power supply. Uh, for example, if you have a 24 volt coming into your system and you want to put a common mode choke into that, then that needs to be appropriately rated to the current load of the power supply and if you're not sure about the amount of current that you're gonna be drawing you should over specify it for obvious reasons and then you can just fit multiple parts for example you may have uh, several footprints uh, with a big chunky one and a couple of smaller footprints for the inductor that is a very good and common practice in power supply design as well if you'd like to design your own EMI filter you should really know why exactly are you doing this. It might be because it is cheaper and it is, like I showed you earlier, off-the-shelf parts can be rather expensive. But very often off-the-shelf parts will give you much better results because they have components tied together and closely matched to one another. Then the second step in the EMI filter design is to know the frequency that you're trying to filter. And that can be quite tricky to find out. 
or calculate in advance. Very often I find it much easier to place generic values for EMI filter into the circuit and then adjust them by experiment once I get the circuit back and I can actually measure its emissions. If you do happen to know the exact center frequency that you need to filter out, then you can either use an online calculator such as the Worth Electronic or you can calculate the filter values by yourself and I will provide the link in the description for both. The best practice that you can follow when designing EMI filter is to leave enough space for modifications. What if our circuit does not have AC input and instead relies on a DC input such as PoE? Well, in this case, we need to provide the filtering as well. So, in this example, we have three ferrite beads on each line of the PoE signal and we have capacitors to the chassis which all filter out common mode noise signals. So it should look pretty familiar. So the other thing we can look at here is a typical schematic capture of a DC-DC converter. There I will have a ferrite on the input so that if this DC-DC converter is faulty, a short circuit can be easily located by removing L2. Also, it filters out a lot of the noise coming back into the power supply. What I typically have for every power supply is a ferrite bead on its input and 10 microfarad cap and a 100 nanofarad cap next to the power supply input pin. So the point of this is that first of all we filter out the noise coming into the IC from the power supply. Secondly we filter out the noise coming from the IC back into the power supply. And third, if we need to service this PCB and this IC is not working for some reason or it has a short circuit, it will help us to debug this circuit much faster because we can simply remove the ferrite bit and we can see that the short is gone so we know that this is this IC that's causing the fault and not so many other IC because when you have 15 different ICs on a PCB and you have a short on 5 volt to ground it might be quite difficult to find which one of them is actually causing this fault so there are three different reasons for using a ferrite bit on a power supply and then 10 microfarads is a bulk capacitor that gives good source of uh, energy and a low impedance path to the power supply pin and the 100 nanofarad cap is providing this energy at a fast speed because if you only have a bulk capacitor it will not provide it quick enough for the pin and it will be a bit drained so it is important to have uh, multiple values of capacitors in your system. Also make sure to value the ferrite bit according to its current because this could be 1 amps and your ferrite bit might be limited to 200 milliamps. Uh, so this is another common issue when you just slap any ferrite bits without any consideration. So make sure to pay attention to its current rating. As per the value of ferrite bit itself I typically go for 1k or 600 ohm impedance. Um, this just gives a, a good value to filter out as much rubbish as possible. Again, sometimes current is the limiting factor and you need to go down in this value.